So the place that we start this process is with um, a blank assembly file. Um, we could we could go into an individual part file and model this part from scratch, but there's simply no need to do that. Inventor gives us much more useful tools than simply just modeling it by ourselves. Uh, I've created the file, now I'm going to save it. And this assembly file is actually just going to be a throwaway. I'm not going to use it for anything, but Inventor needs the assembly file to, um, to hold the part file that it's going to create. So you click over here on the Design tab, and what we're going to do is use the Design Accelerator to, um, to create our gear. Now we have a lot of design accelerators here. We've got, um, we can do springs, we've got uh, splines, O-rings, keyways, uh, we can do chains, belts, all sorts of different things. But what we want to do, we're going to use a spur gear. Now, uh, I'm sure you're, you're somewhat familiar at least with gears and how they work. And what we're going to do here, well, this, uh, this particular uh, gear that I had set up here the last time uh, wasn't going to work out for one reason or another. So you can see it says calculation indicates design failure. Uh, what we're going to do, the first thing that we're going to start with here, it wants uh, a cylindrical face and a start plane. Now obviously we don't have any cylindrical face here to work from and what that's looking for is the basically the uh, the shaft that the gear will ride on. So lacking an actual cylindrical face, we're going to start our uh, part on the z-axis. We click on that and then start plane and that'll be on the xy plane. Now at this point uh, we have kind of the basic form of our gear here. Uh, and we have a lot of different options in here that we can adjust. We can set, you know, number of teeth and whatnot, and uh, we have all the calculations over here. Uh, in this case, it's set up for a carbon cast steel um, with uh, one horsepower on the the pinion uh, and 0.98 now on the output. Um, you can see the RPM change, the increase in torque, uh, efficiency. Etc. And this is all based on the options we set here. Setting for right now, it's set up to be a four to one gear ratio, uh, diametral pitch of of uh, ten. Uh, distance between centers of the two gears is right now three inches, twelve teeth per uh, for this gear, forty eight teeth for the other gear. But we can we can adjust all of these things here. So. Right now, dragging this out, that changes the number of teeth on this gear, but since we still have a 4 to 1 ratio set, uh, once it updates, it'll it'll adjust that to, to be 48, but we can change the width of this. Right now, I'll leave it at, uh, we want this to be uh, 1 eighth of an inch thick because that's going to make it a little bit easier for us to, to mold the part and get a good part. Hit calculate and um, yes it is it does say design failure and that's um, due to me designing a plastic gear and inventor is looking at this as being a steel gear and, and of course yeah that's not going to come out so well. But we're going to go ahead and click OK and you can see it's, it's now creating um, the actual part file for the gear. And I'll just go ahead and accept that. And now we have a fairly basic little gear shape. Actually, you know what? I think I want to make that a little bit thicker. So we'll right click on it and edit. And this is one of the other nice things about Inventor. It's so easy to just go back and change things. So hit accept. There we go. <clears throat> now, excuse me. Uh, since this is going to be an injection molded part, we don't really want to have a cross-sectional thickness anywhere of more than about an eighth of an inch. So we're going to 
and come in here and edit our part, edit our spur gear one. And I'm going to start a sketch. Start it right there. See, we've got our center point already, already called out. And I want to project some construction geometry here. And this way, I'll be able to to pull a dimension off of off of like this this uh, radius right here. So I'm gonna I'll turn construction geometry off. Start from the center. Come out there, and using the dimension tool, I'm gonna set this dimension. to be 0 0.0625 and I'm going a little bit thinner than the the eighth of an inch that I really want things to be um, mostly because um, uh, this right here is more than an eighth so we're still gonna have a relatively consistent cross-sectional area so we've got finished sketch I'm gonna extrude I'm going to extrude cut, and I'm going to cut in by 0.125 inches. And using the measuring tool, oops, using the measuring tool, I can now check this. And yep, that's an eighth of an inch, which is exactly what we want. And now we need another hole in the middle this time. So again, I've created a sketch and we still have that that point I'm going to select that and define it as a center point now and the important thing about a center point is that when you go to create a hole uh, Inventor will automatically pick up a center point whereas the origin point it's not gonna necessarily recognize that so create a hole termination we're gonna go through all we want the diameter Oh, and yet yeah, you see how it automatically picked the hole up. That was what I was talking about. We want the diameter to be, yeah, a quarter inch. And that is how easy it is to create a fully functional gear. Now, click on the Manage tab here. And nope, they moved it. Uh, it's on the Environments tab now. That's right and we click on create mold design and when we click on create mold design uh... yep we want to go ahead and save the part uh... when we click on create mold design it's going to offer to set up a, a new assembly and some new folders and this is going to make a ton of new files so i want to uh... create a subdirectory here that uh, is going to hold everything uh, we'll call it gear mold and we're going to call this uh, gear mold which has the virtue of being descriptive while not creative and we're going to go ahead and hit OK there <coughs> and now it's brought us uh, over into the um, mold design environment and we've automatically inserted our part here and to begin with we need to see whether we're going to align it with the part coordinate system or the part centroid and the part coordinate system is for me anyway is kind of the, the good one to go from but I tend to design with symmetry in mind so I build everything logically around the part coordinate system if you didn't do that then the part center of mass might be better for you so uh, if you guys want to follow along go ahead and create your own gear and get yourselves to this point and then uh, come back and we'll take a look at the next part